Hey, it's Chris from Legia Games. Uh, tonight, I'm just going to be doing a quick, real quick video on the unboxing of a recently acquired game from the publisher Devious Weasel Games. This is Cosmic Frog World Eaters from Dimension Zero. So um, let's go and take a look. So here it is. Here is Cosmic Frog, World Eaters from Dimension Zero. Uh, just got this in the mail from uh, the publisher designer. It is beautiful looking on the outside, to be very frank. It's very uh, retro 1970s-esque. Um, let's take a look inside and see what we got. And first off, it's got stuff on the outside. You can see it's from Devious Weasel Games. Um, so great thing there. And you can actually see that they've got some tips on each side of the box itself uh, in how to play the game on all four sides so you can kind of, you know, uh, <laughs> they're not wasting any space, I guess. So let's see what we got. We have some nice, uh, very nice looking crystals here. Um, this is sort of Century Golem-esque, if you will. Um, these are probably hard to see as they're white, but oh, these are very nice quality. Very much Century Golem edition, uh, above and beyond, even a little larger than that. Uh, you have your little snap-on colored bases uh, to distinguish your frog from somebody else's. Uh, now you have a couple different, two different types of frog miniatures here, and uh, the video may not do these uh, great service, but these are actually uh, very well detailed um, and surprisingly solid. Um, two different stances, so you can, again, you can tell because you can play teams in this game as well. So if in case you need to be able to distinguish one from the other in abilities and that sort of thing, you can do it with that. Let's see. Now you have your thicker tile pieces, and these are, I, I cannot do these justice. I'm not sure I've seen tiles this thick in a board game at all. So um, I have to actually take it out to show you how thick this is. I think this is like the five millimeter. I mean, you can see, you know, just how massive these things actually look. And um, maybe comparison wise, that would be a little bit better to do. Now you've got all your other tiles here. And this is again, this is sort of here. Here we go. You can see the difference in thickness there. So maybe that entails it a little bit better in terms of the difference. So, I mean, this is probably twice as thick as these other tiles. Um, that you're laying down in the middle of the ether uh, to jump from, essentially. And you've got all your four different colors again. Um, I love this. Um, I, I can't say this enough. This is one of my biggest criticisms in any game I get if it doesn't have enough baggies and has tons of baggies. Um, let's see, you have all of your vaults. So in this vault, you are trying to figure out um, or not figure out, but this is where you're storing the lands that you eat and you bring into your own dimension, essentially. And it also has, looks like it has scoring on there for how many you get at the end game. There's two different scores that you use, uh, you know, the land domain and then the same lands in terms of how many are in a row and how many are the same different uh, types because there's four colors. So if you have all four colors in the lowlands, you get this, highlands, you get that. So it's a nice summary for everyone playing. Again, it's really a four to six player game, but there's variants for two and three as well. Um, so I mean, this is, again, this is very solid. This is very, very thick, um, high component quality so far. I'm very impressed. Um, this is, this is the same, uh, six, and this is your expended oomph as they call it in the, in the book. Um, otherwise I think that's your Omega symbol. And then this is your gullet. So in the frog, you are swallowing these lands and you have to bring them back to said vault to be able to score them. As long as they're here, uh, they don't count. Let's see what else we got. Oh, the ability cards. Uh, again, quality. Uh, the art is fantastic on all of these. The art, I believe, is on is different on every single ability card. And there's really a lot of detail that has sort of gone into this. So you're getting <laughs> all sorts of crazy powers. Um, let's see, a quick reference. Again, this is massive. This is massive, especially with a game this complex. Um, I have the rule book sitting over beside me. I took that out right before the video. I forgot to put it back in by accident, but this is a good thick rule book. Um, it is a total of about 19 different pages or so. 
so you can see exactly you know what's going on and it's it's a good read it's a good thick read and so i'm glad that they're going to have a lot of the quick references in here um so you can kind of have your own guide and they're two-sided you have different actions if you're in the shard um you know or in the ether the shard being on the land basically and the ether being in empty spaces so um, again, it's nice and com compact. So having read the rule book a little bit, I know a little bit about what the details are from that. And then here are your here is your other card deck. Um, again, I like these little tab things. These little tab things make so make it so much easier for uh, you to open decks of cards nowadays. Except for instead of those little tabs on the side, um, this just really just a small thing. And I'm not sure how much cost goes into that, but I'm always pleased when I see that because I mean you can see boom you know 20 seconds I got this open as opposed to having to go get the knife and again you've got your different colors you've got your different actions um you know oh I know what these are for these are for so the difference in this game is the turn order you shuffle all, all of these together and so you can see all the backs are the same and uh you shuffle a certain amount per person in the deck and then the randomization happens in terms of the turn order each round. So it's a little Aeon's End-like. So again, they're nice, they're sturdy quality. Uh, splinters, you throw a couple of these in as well. Uh, when a splinter happens, it blows up stuff. A couple different colored dice. These are the dice that you're using for your abilities. Um, nothing special. They're just, they're nice, solid feel. Numbers are a little fancy. So nothing six of them, two of each, so you're not necessarily having to share. And now this is where the really impressive thing comes in, is this is a neoprene mat. This is, this is impressive. Um, it's not a big board. I maybe wish it, wish it was a little wider, but it fits right in the box. And for the price point to get something like this, um, this is, this is really nice. You have your outer dimensions, uh, over on this side, you have all of the hexes where you're putting the tiles there. The ether is anything outside or anything without land. And um, it's just, it's nice. So, yeah, I think that's everything. Um, and it's a nice insert. This is an insert that's made to store, uh, not necessarily to um, just travel in or to ship it in. So I'm, I'm impressed so far. This is nice. This is a very solid component uh, selection in this game. And I can see why it is the price point it is, and it definitely makes sense. So there you go. There is the unboxing for Cosmic Frog from Devious Weasel Games. Um, I'm super impressed so far. Um, I can't wait to get it to the table. The review hopefully should be coming in the next week or two, if whenever I can get enough people uh, to play it in the pandemic. So uh, be on the lookout from that side of things. I'll also be having another unboxing or two of recently acquired games in the near future. So. Um, if you like this, like, subscribe, um, leave me a comment below. Um, shout out to the guys that sent me this game. This is my first uh, publisher game, and I'm proud to put it on display because so far it's, it's checking all the boxes for me. Thanks.